most of my work uh, you can see or you even can read as a kind of autobiography. Um, I don't have that much imagination, so I refer to my personal life or the, the, my family history. And uh, in fact, the, the four paintings behind me here, the music boy, which gave the title to the show, they represent my grandmother and her son, who was a twin brother of my mother, and was playing before the World War, Second World War, he was playing the accordion. And it looks like a kind of Arcadia, the woman and her son playing the music, but you have to think that maybe three years later, he's, they go into the resistance, against the Nazis and they are picked up and sent to concentration camps. So therefore this, uh, this uh, quite naive setting of a family has a, a deeper story, a more dramatic story for me. It's related to what you see here in this room, in front of it is a series of 11 paintings called The Contract. And there you see his sister, my mother, with her future husband. They met in the camp at the end of the war and they promised to meet, try to meet each other after the war when they uh, would be safe. And they did and they married, which afterwards was not a brilliant idea, but okay, I'm the result here of this. And, uh, other paintings here in this same room are called the horse and another one is called Maesta. And here also you see uh, uh, some work related to, to my personal life now. And uh, I got the idea of painting this couple uh, seeing a, a pantomime. And in the pantomime you have this classic uh, uh, of uh, two men uh, being disguised in a horse. So I thought maybe I should make a painting of this and instead of, of, pa uh, of painting the two guys, I took a woman and a man uh, without the, their clothes uh, uh, as a horse. And um, because maybe uh, you can have your own view on the painting and you have your own interpretation of the painting. So. That's good. Uh, it's, it's about the relationship between a man and a woman. And I like the way that the man is more uh, is pathetic, uh, grappling uh, <laughs> towards the woman and she's standing there very solid. Uh, I made a second one. I, well, I made different paintings uh, on that theme, but you have a second one here in the show. It's called The Horse Maesta. Uh, because while painting it, I was thinking, I was referring to or better, I was discovering that my painting could refer to Italian uh, Renaissance paintings in the simplicity of painting this woman, uh, this face, but uh, the, the way she's there standing quite proudly like the, the Italian painters should paint uh, Madonna and therefore I called her Maesta. Also when you see her clothes, the architecture in her dress, in her uh, uh, made me think of, of, of uh, some of the austere painters of the Italian Renaissance. And you also see in this room a self-portrait. Uh, it's called memory because in that uh, I'm wearing the bonnet of my grandmother. Therefore it's called memory. So this is a kind of really autobiographical room the, this, uh, where I'm sitting in now. Another theme, another painting, important painting for me in this room, and it's also related, it's called the bracelet. And the bracelet you see is the bracelet that was, uh, that was my mother's one. And uh, in, the, in the beautiful catalogue that is edited, edited for this show, you can read a poem that I wrote about that bracelet. As uh, this uh, room, this let's call it a family room, is related to World War, the, to the Second World War, also does the other room. Uh, because in the other room you see uh, seven paintings, portraits 
of um, Jews deported from Belgium to Auschwitz. And they are part of a larger series, I think I made about 70 of uh, this kind of portraits. Uh, in front of them is a big canvas. Uh, it's called uh, Song of Destiny. And it re it's, uh, it's painted after an important uh, German sculpture of the beginning of the 20th century. A lame brook. And um, first of all, it's a, a, a sculpture that struck me, but secondly, it helps me to, to, to quote by the title Song of Destiny, uh, a, a famous poem by Helderlin, uh, who is describing poor people uh, tumbling into their dest destiny. So also this painting is for me is related to, to this history of Europe uh, going into war, uh, suffering, etc. etc. While I'm relating to, to, to history, I think those paintings like the Deportees or the Song of Destiny, they are still from today, they are still fully into the actuality we, we can see every day on the television. My work's based on found anonymous um, archive footage, which includes snapshots, um, slides, and cine films. Of um, it's always anonymous um, people that I paint, so it's always things that are found on eBay or or just generally found in different places. Um, I sort of use use the painting process or drawing process to kind of elevate them and use these things that weren't int intended as artwork and sort of turn them into something monumental or large scale or to sort of change the meaning of them. Once they're taken out of context, they become sort of meaningful or poetic or silly or funny. I sort of find that uh, it's a really interesting thing to do with painting to like use that to change the meaning of these found images. Gallery 2 features a large drawn installation from 2007, which is um, sort of various mixed media on found book pages. Um, and the subject matter for this was a found anonymous um, photo album um, which featured the life of one lady from when she was about two to when she was in her old age. Um, I thought it would be interesting to deal with this potentially sentimental subject matter in sort of a systematic way by painting, every, painting and drawing every single um, image that was in this album. Um, so it's, it's sort of quite an expansive installation, so I'm sort of interested in the idea of not being able to take it all in at once and having that kind of information overload. Um, and also with it being on the found book pages, it sort of adds an element of the unknown because you don't quite know how the materials are going to react to each book page and um, the different surfaces that I've, I've worked on. Um, and the other work in the installation in Gallery 2 is of um, the, the writing that's on the back of found photographs, so when people have annotated the photograph with somebody's name or the date that the photograph was taken. Um, so I thought this would be sort of a nice complement to the sort of the drawing, because um, it kind of relates um, sort of formally and content-wise to the other work, the drawing installation. Um, it's also got an interesting element of it kind of almost looks like it could be graffiti or it could be just something that's scrawled on a piece of paper and it's then been um, sort of monumentalized on a sort of large scale canvas, which I thought would be a sort of interesting thing to use the painting to kind of make a sort of monument out of these small notes. Um, and they also almost feel a bit like they could be like gravestones or epitaphs or something like that. So again, that sort of, um, again, that kind of relates to ideas to do with photography and um, capturing the moment or immortalising uh, a life through photography. With these um, text paintings, there was an interesting um, element in trying to recreate the handwriting of somebody else through paint. So it's almost like I've had to reenact the person writing the name through the painting process. Um, and it sort of becomes an interesting exercise in how to 
make the space of the painting work as well. It sort of becomes almost like a colour field painting or an abstract painting. So I was in, also interested in uh, the idea of um, sort of a quite complex personal relationship between whoever took the photograph and whoever wrote on the photograph and who, who is featured in the photograph and then this being summarised by one or two words or just a name and then that being divorced from the context it kind of becomes meaningless but it's it's kind of almost poetic but also quite empty because it's the context is what actually gives it meaning um, so it's sort of interesting this whole complex relationship being summarised in one word or two words um, which can also be quite humorous or quite confusing or not very informative at all. I sort of find it really interesting to, to not be, it, like it's a, sort of quite a weighty subject matter, but I find it interesting to also find possibly a bit of humour or um, things like that in the subject as well. There's also a relationship between um, a, the sort of large 24 piece work, which is in Gallery 3 called Apparition, um, which is also black and white. Um, which uses black and white in a sort of different way. So again, it's a found, uh, found image, but this is from a cine film, so it's using a moving image to create my work. Um, and this is sort of 24 frames, which adds up to one second of time, but they've been taken out of sequence and um, sort of placed in a grid format. Uh, and again, this is black and white, which is kind of the color of photography rather than reality. So it's kind of like the idea of uh, making a feature out of the mediation of reality and that this is a kind of artificial reality that's been recorded. Um, so in this work you kind of see the figure moving around as almost like the contained within the, the frame of the canvas but they're trying to kind of burst out of it or move and you kind of get that feeling of movement being captured but also being paused or um, stilted and that kind of the idea of the momentum of the film in the camera start in this chain of movement that then continues through into the painting. Um, so yeah, and then the black and white also allows me to explore elements of abstraction as well, which is always present in my work, that figurative and abstract are kind of pushing against each other and the sort of tension between the two. Um, so I find that a really interesting feature. It, it's kind of in all of my work in slightly different ways. Um, there's also some black and white works which are based on still photographs of people in masks and fancy dress. Um, and again, I've used the black and white to kind of create a sense of ambiguity and this, the sort of figures emerging into the background and the sort of looming out um, at the viewer, which I find uh, quite an interesting sort of psychological effect to use the painting to create a kind of confrontation with the viewer. So in this room, I sort of decided to have um, it's almost like crowds of people lurking out towards you from the darkness um, to sort of really try and uh, take on that sort of the, the oddness of the snapshot that I see in most snapshots but to kind of really focus on that and try and make it um, more of a prominent feature in the finished paintings. Um, but again some of these are sort of different sizes or the book borders which relate to the physicality of the photograph of the source material. Um, in Gallery 3 I've also got some diptych works which are numbered montages um, and they are based on found Super 8 film. Uh, they comprise of like two frames, like the first frame and the last frame um, of each individual film uh, and it's kind of, the montage idea is, it's kind of relating it to the, to, um, like cinematography and like the idea of using montage to condense time and space and uh, sort of the idea of what's been edited out is highlighted, like what's not there is as present as what is. Um, and th these are also, um, again, concerned with the idea of elevating something quite small and, and potentially banal to something quite monumental and like large in scale. Like These are some of the largest works I've made, so because of the scale of these works, they almost become like um, colour field or abstract expressionist paintings. Um, uh, and they sort of become as much about how the painting's made as the image it's depicting and also the physicality of the film itself becomes very present so these feature things like sprocket holes or imperfections on the films or where the film's been overexposed or underexposed um, and this becomes as present as the actual subject which the cameraman was trying to sort of record um, so it's sort of interesting to then try and almost monumentalize these mistakes that have crept into the images um, 
again, it's like the idea of um, sort of not, there's no hierarchy between the subject and what's meant to be there or not meant to be there. I'm sort of letting the sort of chance element um, uh, become as much part of the work as the things I intend to be there.